This is a lecture about passive voice versus active voice. Now, generally in academic writing, especially in humanities classes, active voice is preferred most of the time, not always, not necessarily. So active voice is when the subject of a sentence is performing or doing the action of the verb. Uh, if this is the case, the verb is in active voice. Let's take a look at a few examples. The troops invaded the country. So we have the verb invaded. We have the person or the thing or the group that's doing the action of the verb or performing the action of the verb, the subject, the troops. And it's very clear, right? The troops invaded the country. It's direct. Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein in 1818. So we have the verb wrote. We have the person who did the action or performed the action of the verb. Mary Shelley is the one who did the verb. She wrote the book. Uh, it's very clear. It's very direct. It's an active voice. There are several advantages to active voice. It's more concise, so it gets rid of unnecessary filler words. It's more specific. We have the specific writer or the specific group of people who's doing the invading or the writing. It's a little bit more dramatic because you have the actor of the sentence at the beginning of the sentence. So it emphasizes the actor of the sentence. Generally in English classes, you wanna use active voice when possible, when it makes sense. And in creative writing, most of the time you want to use active voice. Unless of course you have a character and you're using dialogue, then you might have a character that uses passive voice a lot and that might say something about the particular character. Let's also talk about passive voice. Passive voice is not wrong. Passive voice is not a grammar error. It's just that it's not ideal most of the time in academic writing. When the subject of a sentence is receiving the action of the verb, the verb is said to be in passive voice. So the country was invaded by the troops. You can just hear that that's a little bit wordier than the troops invaded the country. We have was, we have by. Also, this minimizes the troops. It minimizes the actor by putting them at the end and it emphasizes the country. There might be a certain situation in which you wanna emphasize the word the country and not the troops, so maybe it would be appropriate to use passive voice. The country was invaded. So this one just eliminates the actor altogether, right? So we eliminate the troops. You can see how politicians or children or people who are trying to minimize their involvement in something might choose to use passive voice. Frankenstein was written in 1818 by Mary Shelley. So you can see that it's wordier than the example that I have in active voice. There's a was, there's a, there's a by. This one uh, kind of downplays Mary Shelley's accomplishment, puts her at the end of the sentence, but it does emphasize the name of the novel Frankenstein. If you're trying to emphasize the name of the novel and de-emphasize Mary Shelley, then maybe you want to use passive voice. But as a rule of thumb, I think you can see how the examples that I have at the top of the page in active voice are more direct and they don't have these extra unnecessary words. So you can kind of think of passive voice if you want to boil it down to something really simple as the difference between saying, I ate your Halloween candy, right? In which you're taking ownership for eating someone's Halloween candy versus something like the Halloween candy was eaten and removing yourself from the equation altogether or putting yourself at the end of the sentence. There are advantages to passive voice. So it has a more objective, detached tone. So certain uh, textbooks or lab reports uh, might require passive voice, although I would still ask your instructor because there are ways to still sound detached and objective uh, without sounding wordy, without using passive voice. Passive voice min or emphasizes the object and minimizes the actor of the sentence. So it might make sense in certain lab uh, reports to focus less on the researchers and more on the results. Uh, it hides blame, saying something like mistakes were made or war was waged or the Halloween candy was eaten or even just putting the person who did it or the group who did it at the end of the sentence, like mistakes were made by my administration, right? Instead of my administration made mistakes. You can see how that changes the meaning just so slight, ever so slightly. Uh, here's an example of a meme that I just found online that I thought was kind of funny. Passive voice, active voice, passive aggressive voice, which we should never use uh, in writing or just probably in relationships in general. There are several myths that people have about passive voice. So some people think it's a grammar error. It's not. Like I said before, it's a style thing. It's not 
related to grammar. So passive voice is not wrong. That's why your grammar checker is not going to flag it. But stylistically, academic writing at least, it's preferable. Active voice is always better, not necessarily. Sometimes passive voice makes sense, right? If you're a lawyer and you're trying to defend your client, you might want to resort to passive voice sometimes. Although I would say most of the time we want to be clear and direct in our writing. Some people think that any to be verb like am or is or was automatically means the sentence is passive. Not necessarily. These verbs can exist on their own in a sentence that is not passive. And some people think since passive sounds like past, uh, that passive voice means it happened in the past, right? Uh, it could be something like your book is loved, right? It doesn't have to mean past tense. So again, in academic writing, or at least in English classes and in most humanities classes, ask yourself if you're using passive voice, why you're using passive voice. And if you can't come up with a good reason for using passive voice, use active.